My name is Marike Huysentruid. I'm one of the co-founders and principal investigators of the Sephoris project. Sephoris is a leading international research project on social enterprises funded by the European Commission. I'm also a co-founder of the Oxygen Lab and today I'm based in Paris working at HEC Paris. So welcome to this module. This is a module about social enterprise and social impact. So I started worrying about social impact probably about two decades ago. As a bioengineering student, I set out to a very small village called Niafunke along the Niger River in central Mali to study irrigation systems, a legacy from French colonial times. I was interested to understand how the governance relations that rule over these irrigation schemes affect the agricultural produce and local economy, as well as how any benefits are distributed amongst people. Later on, when I set out for graduate studies in the US and UK, I became fascinated about how financial relations and market structure affect the economic and social performance of organizations. At the time, I was primarily focused on the non-profit versus for-profit divide, but of course social enterprises as a hybrid form quickly appeared on my radar. So back in 2007, I took a leave from academia to co-found and co-lead a number of social enterprises. And this was right at a time when sort of interests in evaluation and impact measurement really started to surge. This rise was concurrent with the financial crisis and probably not unrelated to that. Um, what did we see? In the wake of the financial crisis, we saw public distrust in businesses grew manifestly. We also saw calls for more transparency sounding ever more loudly. Thirdly, budgetary cuts and austerity really reinforced the focus on value for money amongst government circles. And I'd say, fourthly, we saw you know, major efforts by people like Esther Duflo and Abhijit Banerjee and their colleagues at the Poverty Action, Poverty Action Lab at MIT who are really uh, raising concerns and standards about being able to measure impact of initiatives and projects. So over the past 10 years, working with businesses on social business innovation and partnering with lots of different social enterprises, I'd say my fascination and my interest in the topic of social impact certainly hasn't dwindled. Um, Given the sheer size, scope and depth of societal problems, probably there's one question that does keep me awake at night, which is how can organizations really improve the impact they make? So let us begin. Welcome to this short video presentation where I'm going to share with you some of my experiences as well as my more recent empirical work on social impact and social enterprise. So let us begin by taking a look at some of the trends and patterns revealed by our global survey data on social enterprise and social impact. So back in 2015, we conducted extensive phone and online surveys with over a thousand social entrepreneurs based in seven EU countries plus China and Russia. In fact, some of you who are watching this film perhaps share with us their valuable time and insights for which we are most grateful. So let me put out three data points from this massive data set. Which, I find, which can get us going. First thing to note is when we probed into the mission and vision statement of these enterprises, we find that most of them are fiercely driven and committed to a social mission. Secondly, when it comes to actually measuring uh, the impact that the organizations make, we find that about 65% on average of social enterprise surveyed regularly track and measure the social impact they make. And as you can see, there exist big differences across countries. Thirdly, when, it, when you look a bit closer and ask what is it that they're measuring, we see that there's a predominant focus on outputs, not outcome, not impact. So the most commonly used metric across all countries, except for Sweden, is a count measure. It's simply keeping track of the number of beneficiaries they reach or the number of clients they serve. In Sweden, Sweden is the only country where most of the social enterprises use a quality indicator, essentially tracking the satisfaction of the beneficiaries and the clients they serve. So let me bring in another perspective, which is more of a practitioner perspective, um, and draw out three observations which I think can give you a sense of what is the state of play when it comes to impact measurement and practice. First, I'd say very few social enterprises have really embraced technological innovations to support their monitoring and evaluation efforts. 
So very few, for instance, use mobile devices or other tracking devices to really um, capture information about beneficiary behaviors or satisfaction. And relatedly, I think there's very few social enterprises who have really gone the extra mile to understand what the middle and long-term effects are of the initiatives that they run, be it in the fields of childcare or support to teenagers at risk of dropping out of school. A second observation to make is that when it comes to uh, uh, impact, there's often an enormous preoccupation with scale. And this is not surprising. In fact, many social enterprises require a sufficient scale to be able to break even and to continue to flourish and grow. So if you consider, for instance, social enterprises who are, whose business it is to recycle food waste um, and, and create chutneys and soups and thereby often employ disadvantaged groups, that's the kind of business model that really requires scale for, um, for, for, for the business to break even. And so again, it is not surprising that a preoccupation with impact actually coincides with a preoccupation with scale. And a third point I'd like to make is that actually we have a tendency to hugely underestimate the true impact that social enterprises can make. Let me illustrate this with one example. I have met so many master students who step into the economics profession or who decide to take a master program or enroll into a master program because they were inspired by the book that Muhammad Yunus has written about the Grameen Bank. So Grameen Bank being one of the most well-known, well-cited examples of a social enterprise globally. Um, but not only that, it's not just stories that travel. I'd say that the impact that many social enterprises make goes beyond their organization. Um, and we see this in our survey data as well. Many social entrepreneurs uh, are active in trying to change attitudes and policies vis-à-vis -vis disadvantaged groups. Unfortunately, there is no magic switch that we can pull to increase the societal impact of any given organization. And anyone who's in the field surely will recognize the many different factors that matter and interact. To begin with the people, who selects into the organization, the incentives that you offer, how do you motivate your people, the organizational culture at large, the quality of the service concept that you have in mind, the accessibility of the service, meaning the extent to which behavioral barriers to engage have been removed, the networks in which your organization and your staff is embedded, the financial mix, the governance structure, the market structure, the external environment. So surely when it comes to wanting to improve the societal impact of your organization, it can be overwhelming. Where to start? I believe that we truly tend to underestimate the importance of each of these factors individually and jointly, their alignment, their fit. I think social entrepreneurs could really improve the societal impact of their organization by revisiting some of the choices along each of these dimensions and assuring a better fit vis-à-vis -vis each other. So I'd like to introduce to you the experimental approach. The experimental approach is widely understood to be the most reliable when it comes to testing and evaluating the effectiveness of any given action. The approach is scientific and practical. The approach produces required insights for justifying any scaling up efforts, for rebuffing skeptics, for opening up our eyes to the different effects that a certain action can have across individuals or even within individuals over time. And finally, it helps us understand underlying mechanisms, what is driving the results. Implicitly, the approach also helps organizations to discipline, plan and pace their efforts to improve the societal impact of their organization. It encourages organizations to prioritize those areas where they believe they can have the biggest impact and then to design and test an intervention that at first glance seems compelling but unproven. So the gist of the experimental approach is that when you want to evaluate the impact of a certain change, you create two groups, a control group and a treatment group, who look alike along all possible dimensions except for the control group being exposed to a certain change. The big upshot from this design is that when you want to evaluate the impact of that change, it suffices to simply look at the, the outcomes and compare the outcomes between treatment group and control group. Let me make this more concrete. Consider a social enterprise whose focus it is to provide children at school with special textbooks. 
So what you would do is you would like to create two groups of schools who before the intervention look exactly the same on average. So in terms, look similar in terms of average class size, average quality of the teachers, resources, average socioeconomic background of the, of the children. And then you would introduce your intervention only in the schools that were randomly assigned to your treatment group and then evaluate the su success of those textbooks in this case simply by comparing test outcomes and student achievement between schools that were in the treatment group with those that were in the control group. So let me walk, walk you through a concrete example of how the experimental approach can be put to work. Back in 2015, I was lucky enough to meet an organization called Program M, based in France, whose mission it is to improve the nutritional status of, of babies zero to three years old living in low-income families. The organization takes a two-pronged approach. It provides access to high-quality baby foods by sending those families vouchers or discount coupons. And at the same time, it also provides those families with better information about child nutrition. To target its services, uh, Program M works through intermediaries or prescribers. These, are, these can be social workers, medical staff working at maternal and infant health clinics, um, educational staff working at creches. Um, now, one of the things though, despite the fact that this program has reached out to many thousands of different families, one challenge they faced was that actually 40 to 50 percent of the families enrolled into the program never used the vouchers that were sent to them by mail every three months. So the question was, what could be done to improve the actual utilization rates of vouchers by those families and in some improve the societal impact that this organization makes? So to better understand the challenge that Program M was facing, let me introduce to you two perspectives. There's a rational agent model and there's a behavioral perspective. According to the rational agent model, people have well-informed, stable preferences, they are calculating, controlled and selfish, really. So this view implies that people always maximize, they know what is knowable, they don't need help from anyone, they exploit opportunities when they exist. Concretely, in our setting, this view would suggest that people um, are not using the vouchers simply because they don't perceive the benefits to outweigh the costs. There's a different view though, which is the behavioral view, which is more realistic and also more complicated. According to that view, people exhibit mediocre judgment, they have malleable preferences, they can be impulsive, um, they can be myopic and distracted. So this view, this behavioral view implies that people make inconsistent judgments and decisions and they could actually do with some attention and help from others. Concretely in our setting, according to the behavioral view, People may actually be signing up to the program with good intentions, but they, perhaps they are struggling to follow through and actually use the vouchers that they intended to use. Now, the good news of all this is that behavioral sciences have, has made huge advances forward in recent decades. We now better understand why we behave the way we do, what drives our choices. What is so exciting is that many of those behavioral insights are very subtle, sometimes counterintuitive, they can be very powerful and most of all they're underexploited. So I'm truly convinced that many social enterprises could improve the impact they aspire to make by simply better integrating insights from behavioral sciences into their program and the way they frame, present their program to people. So let me try to convince you of the power of behavioral sciences and experimental approach by showing you what we did. With, together with Program M. We wanted to test the effectiveness of seemingly minor cues in the way Program M communicates with its families, the effects of those cues on actual utilization rates. We had a fairly large sample, so we could test in parallel different interventions and compare the results. So we wondered what if we visualized how Program M actually works. Perhaps people are not following through because they find it too complex or perhaps they're facing a limit, uh, language barrier. Or what if we made more salient the financial gains involved? Perhaps people find it difficult to assess and compute the financial savings that they could be achieving. Or what if we reminded people about the program on a regular basis? Perhaps people don't engage because they forget. 
In fact, poverty has been found to actually limit mental bandwidth and as a result exacerbate problems of limited attention. So let's have a look at the results. What did we find? Well, sending regular reminders produced the largest effect on actual utilization rate of the vouchers. In addition, making salient the monthly savings or even just visualizing how the project worked also, to a smaller extent, improved actual use of the vouchers. Now, what I find so fascinating about the experiment like this one is that it comes at a very low cost. Um, and yet, it has generated important benefits to Program M. Today, Program M has really mainstreamed all of these behavioral nudges throughout their communication channels. Program M has learned a lot. Not only that, it has improved the real impact that it makes. Let us take a step back from the specific field experiment with Program M. I'd like to emphasize three important strengths of the experimental approach. One, the approach really helps social enterprises generate evidence, reliable evidence of what works, what doesn't. Secondly, it also helps organizations to produce more compelling argumentation. It helps them better understand under which conditions their actions are most likely to have the biggest impact. And thirdly, the approach really helps to improve this any scalability efforts. Having said this, I also believe there are a couple of things that do need to be in place for the experimental approach to really make sense. One is there needs to be buy-in. Commitment needs to appreciate the benefits of experimentation. Secondly, we need scale. We need to be able to reach a sufficiently large sample for us to be able to uh, achieve meaningful insight. So as a rule of thumb, I'm thinking more around 100 of subjects and not 10 tens of subjects. And uh, finally, we need a good question. We need to be focusing our inter intervention efforts on generating new insight, on testing the untested. So to conclude, I hope this presentation has helped you to see the big picture, to see big trends in the area of social enterprise and social impact. Their rhetoric does not always coincide with practice. I also hope that this presentation has helped you to appreciate some fields of impact in practice where I expect to see a lot of exciting new developments in the coming five to ten years. Finally, I hope this presentation has helped you to see very concretely how the experimental approach combined with the behavioral sciences presents a practical tool that social enterprises can use to really increase the impact that they aspire to make. Now, before I let you go and move on to your next activity, let me ask you one little favor. Please take a few minutes to reflect on the main lessons that you draw from this short video presentation. The reason I ask is because research has shown that doing so actually can improve your productivity and ideally improve the real impact that you and your organization will make in the future. And of course, indirectly, this would also increase the true impact that I've made through this short video presentation. Thank you, goodbye and good luck.